Good evening, everybody watching. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of people watching tonight. Um, we thought we'd go live a bit earlier than normal, so it gives a chance for everybody to come online and uh, watch as um, Facebook always takes a little bit of time to uh, tell everybody that we're live. Um, God, this name, Greg Hansen, the name Hansen has been around the MX pit since the 70s, since I was a little kid. Um, great rider, great guy. It's been pretty much all of his family of road bikes at some time of their lives. Um, all pretty good, well, pretty good, all really good riders as well. Um, I actually rode with uh, Greg's nephews. Jason Gutteridge and Jamie Gutteridge, who's Greg's sister's sons. Um, Greg riders, those two were, and they, they also wore the Union Jack. I always remember it as a kid. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to tonight. Um, just got to put the stuff up on screen. If you can share it with all your friends, of course. Um, also, Dave from Vets, Dave King from Vets MXDN. The encyclopedia of motocross i think we should call him from now on it's not much he doesn't know about about the sport and like like myself just loves it just got to get rid of some stuff There we go, that's it. Don't like that thing, keep going along the bottom, it takes your eye of what's going on. Anyway, you know how it starts now. We start with a bit of video and um, what Greg's done. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, you can ask some questions, we'll bring them up on screen. I've, I've also shared a link. If you click on that link and you want to come on the show and ask a question live, you can. Um, you'll see it up on the comments page. So anyway, it's seven o'clock. Time to uh, get on with the Vets MXDN TV show. That's what I'm calling it from now on. So here we go. Hope you enjoy it. is different so uh, we'll see how the third one goes hopefully, hopefully we can get out in front again and uh, try it again yes it can't go wrong three times running surely it has done before <laughs> <laughs> but in leg three greg was again out in front and about to lap a back marker Brackley. there is the race leader still greg hansen a little bit disappointed i would suspect with having the first he's two. established such a commanding lead in this one to my mind it's unlikely that Prattley can reel that in. However, Prattley first of all has to demolish Matt Bates and we're looking at them now. And Bates has waved him through. Matt Bates and a bit of politics there and that defeats me for a moment. I can't think for a moment why Matthew Bates would have waved Craig Prattley through. They were old schoolboy adversaries for many, many years. But of all three Ken Hall legs. Hansen has got the entire length of the start finish straight, as you can see. Still in fourth place, number 37, Marshall. Well, a nice warm feeling for Greg Hansen. I think he feels that this one is really his now. Look at the lead he has, and he'll be looking... Down that far start straight into that sweeping right-hander that has a little bit of a away camber. Does catch a few riders out, but number five it is, then goes to the front, Greg Hansen. Here they go, but it is Hansen. 
Greg Hansen also riding 500 Grand Prix, but coming back to the British Championship for the 125s. Back underway as Hansen at the front leads under no challenge whatsoever. Second a lot for his determination after taking that exit off the track with Steele into the ropes. But the leader coming through, Hansen from Barford. These two really are not easy when you're that far back. Hansen on the Hansen Honda. Right as the chequered flag comes up and goes out. Celebratory wheelie from Greg Hansen. Oh, Hansen, here they go. Look at the difference. Hansen flies. Oh, tremendous stuff from the Hurricane Hansen and Dave Thorpe as they came out over that jump. Now they're into the bomb hole. Thorpe gets hooked up there on that jump. Top through. Hansen got him. Hansen the one side it. As they go into the left hander. Hansen goes for the inside line. Thorpe's going to miss that score belt. Hansen again. <laughs> wow, sending shivers down my spine. <laughs> well, obviously, I a life in motocross, Greg. Um, I've only just seen that bit at Ken Hall. That must have, for people that are watching, if Greg would have won that, like, well, he did win that race and Craig Prattley would have been third, Greg would have won the meeting. So I, before I showed it tonight, I said to Greg, does that cheese you off before I could show it? But Matt Bates let, let Craig buy. Mm, I know. What was, that, I, I, what was that all about? Uh, I don't know, Rick. You all right, Dave? How are you doing? Yeah, you all right? right You're good. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know, really. It's I, I'd forgotten about it until Adam brought it up earlier and uh, – yeah, it's it's. I mean, I've I've never had a problem with with Matt, so we've always been been friends and stuff. But um, yeah, it was. I remember you know coming in from that race and them telling me what had happened, and I thought, well, that's 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 very unlike Matt. But um, I I never knew the reason why he'd done it. But I'd I'd imagine that they are you know quite good buddies them two, you know. So that's probably the only reason. Where did you find that footage from, Adam? <laughs> Just looking at looking at the internet, finding stuff is. I just found it the other day. There's uh, three races. What what a great track as well. Oh God, know. yeah, absolutely. Did Did mm. you enjoy that track, Greg? I I did enjoy it actually because it was so fast, and I tend to like the the fast uh, fast flowing circuits. You know, Streetly being another one similar. And uh, yeah, I did I did like the fast flowing hard hard pack type circuits. That was my definitely my thing. So. Did you did you think the five hundred was a bit? I've always said to people, I've always thought when you're riding a five hundred against two fifties, it's almost a disadvantage. Riding a five hundred against two fifties, yeah. Uh, I I think you know the five hundred. I think is always an advantage um, unless the track gets very tight and twisty, and then the two fifty comes into its own, and then. Then you've got lights of Rob Herring that come along when we were we were around, and um, he made a two fifty work on most tracks, you know. So um, no, I think I think the five hundred was the thing to have. It, it, it helped on the starts. Obviously, you were always able to get out the gate and make make the race um, a lot easier. But um, yeah, I think no, five hundred was a was a good thing. I, I could never ride a Two fifty, two strokes, so well. That was a problem. I did always, always struggle. Never my thing. It was either the smaller bikes, or the or the five hundreds that I sort of adapted to. Really, I don't think I ever remember seeing you ride a two fifty. Um, in nineteen eighty seven, uh, I done one two five, two fifty, and five hundred championships that year, and that was fourth in the two fifty I got, which was my best, best ever result on a 250 which i was quite pleased with to be fair because yeah, again we had lights of erin and Jim and them in there. yeah that's right so um yeah it's yeah but 250 was never i never rode it well i never rode it well it just wasn't i couldn't get the best out of it but yeah I, I, see i always thought that a 250 was a lot easier to ride than a 500 you know a 500 is always going to tire you out quicker than a 250 will that was just that was what i always thought that 
if you were quick on a 250, you'd always sort of stay with a 500 rider. <clears throat> well, no, I don't, I don't know. I mean, again, <laughs> riding with Rob, I mean, he, he, he found pace everywhere on a 250. But um, myself personally, the, 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 the reason why I think I was, I was good on, on the extremes like 500 and 125 when when i met charlie in when i was 16 straight away he put me on a 465 yamaha charlie uh, as in the charlie ford, ford sorry yeah oh, charlie ford yeah. at ford and Ellis. so he put me on a big bike very young and i think i run on that for a two or three years on on big bikes 460 465 490 and then he decided to drop down into the 125s and do the 125 series and of course I then rode a 125 very sort of aggressively because of my sort of two years on a big bike. So, what, what year was that, Greg? The 125? Uh, the 125, so 16, 17, God, 81, 82, 83, 84. I think I started riding 125s with Charlie. So, you would have had the likes of Paul Hunt, Kevin Proud. Um, well, who else was the fast guys? Uh, Roger Harvey. That's it. That's right. Yeah. I, um, Paul Hunt, I think I was runner up to him twice in the one, two fives before I, before I won it, um, in 86. So yeah, yeah. Paul was always, you know, with the Kagiva, he was on a very good Kagiva. And yeah. He, a, he had that, a very that good he had that factory Kagiva? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Cause he was doing Grand Prix and scoring yes. quite well in the Grand Prix. So yeah, it was, um, yeah, I, I I run with him, which was good because I I think the first year Suzuki in in eighty five, Yamaha eighty four, and then Kawasaki in eighty six, which was a year I I managed to to win it because uh, Andy Nichols broke his wrist for the last round. So Andy Nichols, how could you forget him? He was a huge name back in that era. Wasn't yeah, he? yeah. So when. When did you buy get that Rover, Greg? That what was that? Or was that when you got your first Suzuki? Let's just bring this little picture up for people. This you know, this is the sort of thing you I suppose you'd done in the eighties. You'd do stuff like this. When it comes up, that is. If it comes up, yeah. Uh, there it is. Wow! Look at that. That was that was a class bit of machinery, eh? <laughs> 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 You need a side shot of that because that was the front end was yellow and the rear end was blue. Rear wheels were blue, front wheels were yellow. And uh, what was it? Cut, cut and shot. <laughs> 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 it was. I, I just started gone into painting then because Keith and Rick were mechanicking because uh, the family's always been involved in in cars. And um, I started painting and I thought. I got hold of this SDI Rover and I thought I'd uh, I'd paint it. So I painted it half blue and half yellow and put teams of it down the side of it. <laughs> yeah, can was... you imagine how cool that would be today, though, turning up at a meeting with that? No, honestly, honestly, that would, that would beat anything in the paddock. Oh yeah, it was just it was it was great. It was really good. I, I used to wanna, I remember turning up in the paddock a couple of times with a nice open grass field and yeah well a bit sideways and coming into the pits it was yeah it was quite back good. then we were all so innocent you could get away with that shit couldn't you you, you know could. and, and you it was could. brilliant you genuinely thought you know you were doing something something good and, and looking back on it 30 years later you know you it was good you know something different yeah. what what year was that uh greg uh well zuki that was 80 that was 85 wasn't it 85 85 or, yeah, 85. That was the 85. RM500 special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Adam, I might Adam have... will now tell you that he rides one of those. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was... How, that did was that come, how did that come about, Greg? Because obviously there was, I think there was only 12 of them made. Well, it was Charlie Ford's connection with um, Graham Beamish. And um, they they met at the show one year and Graham said, we'll we'll do one for you or do a couple for you. And um, they did, they did, Graham kept to his word. And uh, we had a couple of those and they were such an interesting bike to ride. Um, really, for a 500, it was a really revvy bike. 
so much so I used to lose quite a few nuts and bolts off it. So we had to keep an eye on them all the time. But it was it was a cracking bit of kit. Really, really good bike. Because it, uh, it was a 250 chassis, wasn't it? An 84 250 chassis. That's right. Was it? A, I don't think it was a, a works motor, was it? Was it a modified no, it was, Yeah, modified centre port they made it because it came out, It was originally side port and they made them centre ports. A um, little bit of work on the engine, nothing nothing much. But, uh, but it had like the, the, the works, factory works tank on it, didn't it? That's right, yeah. It was. It looked, it looked, it looked awesome. It, it, it was good. It was good. And yeah, it was, it was, yeah, my first sort of time I got going really on the, on the open class, because I rode open class like big bikes when I was 16, 17, but it was just, it was learning years really. And that was just the start of um, sort of getting a little bit of pace really. Um, so that was good. Did, did you ride the Suzuki at Farley Castle? I in the support did, yes. group uh 85 i think i was in the uh, main main group then I'd, I'd already qualified the year before on the yamaha and yeah it's my my year first year in in the top 35 they called it then yeah that was that was good would you like it to go back to that sort of system greg where you you have to sort of get there on your merit well it was it, it developed as the years went on and like you spent a whole year in the support class and i mean i was buzzing when when i knew i was going to go into the top 35 it was something massive to me you know spending a year well i actually spent i think it was two years trying to qualify so the year i actually made it i was i was wrapped about it and uh you know the following year you set yourself up and put the work in because obviously it's a big thing to get in with uh, your heroes, you know. Yeah, I mean, so, it's a, like a learn, you know, it's a learning year for you, isn't it? We're well, not learning year, but just learning, just being around at, at those same events. Because I think were, were the qualifying races at the British Championship, you know? When yeah, they, I'm sure they were, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah, and and the, the thing is also you was in the sport, but you also got to watch the top top one, so you knew where you was going anyway the following year. And um, it was just you're riding a track that's cut up, you know how the the the, the main you know how how it's roughed up with because British Championship tracks on a day get really really cut up yeah, from yeah. from schoolboy tracks, you know. So you're riding the tracks that you knew you were going to ride the following year, and uh, it was, you know, if I mean I think I think I qualified, I think I went up in sort of third or fourth place. So I didn't I didn't do brilliantly in the support but i when i got up to the british i sort of developed over the next two or three, three years again you know and it wasn't until i was 22 that um i sort of hit my hit my peak really so it took me a while yeah was there ever a, just going right back to the beginning was there ever a time that you were not going to get into motocross you know with uh with is, is your your uncle wasn't it which is ken uh the cousin your cousin, cousin, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with somebody like that in the family, I think that was always going to happen for you, wasn't it? Well, I remember I was sort of eight, nine years old, and we went to watch Ken at Ellingdon. Anyone remember Ellingdon? Um, no, at Northampton. And um, he built himself a 500 gold star. And I remember that day that Freddie Mays was doing a, the, the winning. And I was sat on a bank, sort of cheering him on every lap. And that was my first impressions of motocross. And it was just, it, it was in us because my bro older brothers like Keith had uh, wanted to start and he started a year before me. And um, my older brothers always sort of had sort of field bikes because we lived on a farm. And seeing Ken racing, it was just sort of like, it just started going in and thought, of, yeah, this is this is something I'd want to do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, how it, how it actually started, um, we was at uh, a British Championship at um, Fenny Compton, is that? Was that, yes. remember that one? Um, is that Bristol Way? No, Fenny Compton, is that Bambury? Is that Bam Bambury or I, I, Bristol I or something? Well, Fenny Compton it was. It was a British Championship with Noyce and Hudson there, and I think Ken was in the support. And um, there was a, a, a display there of bikes. There was an Italijet, sir. Um, 
and um, I said to my dad was there I said dad I said god I'd like that bike there it's a 50cc four speed Italian jet and I was I was nine at the time nine or ten and uh, I said dad I'd love that anyway nothing else was said and um, he'd actually uh, come home and went back took some money back and bought an Italian jet for me and Rick uh, yeah. Rick had a little auto Italia jet, so that's where it all started. You know, I was I was sort of nine, ten years old. What good dad and, you were! Oh, he, he he never gave us nothing. And we 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 only spoke to him when he when we've spoken to. If you know what I mean, like yes, dad, no, but like dad, I just was brave enough to say, dad, I'd love one of them. You know, and uh, yeah, they came both bikes come back. You know, I mean, Rick were like, yeah, you know, and that was the start of it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> that, 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 that's um, what they dropped from World War Two from in a parachute. That was Ken's corgi. <laughs> Ken had a corgi, yeah. So, um, so that's that's where it all started. From did you ever get on the corgi? Corgi, you know. Greg? No, I, I didn't. I didn't get on it. No, no, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't. No, I wasn't offered a ride on that. That, that bike's not still in the family, is it? Because I, I asked um, Barry in the week if he still had it. He posted a picture up of it. Right. No, no, it's not. No, it, gone. It was, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. It's so gone. that, obviously, I don't know whether everybody knows Greg's story or not, but that, like your dad bought you an Italajet bike at the age of nine, and then like a couple of years later, devastation. Yeah, well... We, we we had these bikes that we rode on on the farm and um then when i was 11 um i i, I said dad I, you know i want to ride i really want to race really and um he said okay and he ordered a uh, a yz 100 would it have been c or d then um from doug wheeler and um come to the first meeting at we had to, it was a couple of weeks away stan lake um for the i think it was a reading schoolboy scramble club and this this um yamaha hadn't turned up so uh doug loaned us a, a rickman zundap 100 mm. and uh i still remember to this day sitting on the start line for the first race mervyn was there that day mervyn anstey in the hundreds in the intermediates and the first race, I was there on the line and just, I was probably two seconds behind the rest of them going off the line. But um, I was seventh. I was seventh in the first race. I got through to seventh. Yeah, and right. obviously I'd been, I'd been riding at home on the, in the fields and stuff. And uh, that was it. And so that was, that was my first race. And then the, the Yamaha came a couple of weeks later and dad went off with Keith because uh, Keith had started the adults. That's, I think that was the second Yamaha, that one. But um, Keith, uh, Dad went off with Keith to a meeting, and I went to Prince's Risborough for the Redden again. And um, I think it's the fourth meeting, and I won it overall. And I've got, I've got the trophy somewhere. I think it's up in the loft. I've got the first ever trophy, and I brought that home. But Dad didn't see it. And... Um, didn't see me win on the day, but he obviously saw the trophy. And uh, yeah, a week later, bloody um, Saturday morning, my dad passed away in the morning in bed, and um, that was it. He'd, he'd, he'd gone. I was I was just eleven years old, you know, and uh, that that was just devastation. And uh, I decided <clears throat> the family obviously it was it was it was so unexpected, but we decided the next day to go and ride and um it was for what was barks and hansen so on the sunday we you know we all set off and and i won i won that that meeting as well so i nearly had four wins that day but just fluffed the last race but what year was this greg 77 76 76, 76 yeah um but that was that was That was um I think the link's gone. It come back. 
Hopefully. You there, Greg? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. The link went. Yeah, yeah so it... bloody like you say, devastating times and how how did you sort of carry on with your career with obviously who who then took took you to meetings and you know Well I was just gonna say, like without dad, you know, I've had to go through I've had to go through um my career watching um watching people you know and, and and people around me just with the support they had um yeah that must have been you know, right. and and i when when i lost my dad um the um my family i had a lot of brothers and sisters older than me and they all um they all clubbed in every week to keep me riding and they bought my bikes for a couple of years and um Yes. They got me to I was I was they got me through the schoolboys and I got support in the last year in schoolboys and um from from a local Kawasaki dealer and then then Charlie took me on at sixteen and then he basically he basically was my father figure. He he we became so close and he just put he put so much time and effort into me. And, I think and, that I think that with your family, Greg, me as a spectator, I, I mean, I could see it that all the way through your career, your family always was there at the meetings with you, and you always had such a big entourage. I mean, I never knew who was who, but I knew that I knew they were your family, and you know they were always very wherever you ride, wherever you were, they were there supporting you. Well, Dave, I think I think that. The reason I lasted so long racing motorbikes is one, one I always, I always was was riding for my family because they were the ones that got me through the schoolboys at very very financially hard times. So I always was riding for them and, and my dad and you know my mum never used to come and watch because she used to it used to frighten her to death. So she always stayed at home and I just. I just rode for them, you know, because and and it just came it just came good. I I was the sort of person that never believed I was I could ever win anything. And you know, I remember crossing the line, winning the British one two five uh, in eighty six, and I, I I went across the line. I didn't do anything flash, jumping over the last jump or anything. I was just like, whoa, what have I just done, you know? And it's it's really weird that I'm that sort of person. I don't actually realise what I can do. And I've done this and I just, it took ages to sink in. You know, so just put me straight then. So Ken, Ken Hansen was your cousin. Yep. Barry. Brother. Brother. Rick. Brother. Keith. Uh, your, your other brother. Yeah, Keith. Yeah, that's your brother. And brother. Did, did, did you lose um, somebody just I, recently? Yeah, I lost Graham. Um, uh, the one of my brothers that used to take me to all the early days meetings, yeah, he oh, yeah. just had a short, short illness and um, uh, just passed away December the first last year. So it, we, 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 there's, there's six brothers I've got or did have, and and two sisters. So we're a big family. Yeah. I lost my stepbrother a few years ago, and um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it was devastating it just the family just yeah we, we're all struggling a little bit really yeah, yeah. because he, was, he wasn't ill he wasn't ill you know and he kept himself up together yeah i, I suspect you probably saw the news that um mike bell died suddenly at the weekend i mean it's crazy yeah. a very very fit guy that just just was so fit and it's just shocked me you know it's it's I'm someone sure. that i we've we've all grown up with you know yeah. and watched and look like at the shot, like you sound about like the Hansons, you know, like uh, Dave. When I was a kid, the, well, when I was a kid, right? I'm not sure I, how you describe them? Don't mess with them. That's what I was told. No, when I was when I was when I was a kid, you can still hear me. There's a picture of Greg there on a Kawasaki. I would have been about five or six years old watching Greg. That's at a place called Childry. Um, my, my cousin was racing and I just remember that was my first memory of Greg. He was like, I don't know, most probably three quarters of a lap in front of everybody. 
So I've actually, I, I didn't really get to meet Greg till later on through your meeting, really, Dave, Farley Castle that you put on. Oh, really? and, yeah, I, I obviously knew who Greg was because I raced with his nephews. And this is another time we met Greg. <laughs> wow. Is it wow. you in the middle? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, me in, the, and, yeah you... me in the middle, obviously. Greg, Greg on the left and your nickel on the right. Blimey! Look how well I'm dressed. My God! Uh, yeah, we've all we've all we're all dressed. We've all got ties on, shirts. Yeah. Not like <laughs> wow. But yeah, so I, actually, I met I met Greg those times. So for me as a rider, when I was doing schoolboys, I always looked up to Greg. And then it wasn't till later on, like because of your meeting, really. I think Dave, what 10, 11 years ago? I don't know how. I think Greg. I was messing about doing a bit of singing, and then I think we actually interviewed Greg. As a bit yeah. of a laugh. I'll remember that one. <laughs> uh, uh, at the first turn in 2009. <laughs> and yeah, you, won, uh, you won the bet there, didn't you? Boring. I did, yeah, I did. I th was that 2009 or 2011? I think I might have won it. I think it was 2009. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I'm sure you were, at the, you were at the first one. But I what was... was. I think it was you and Steve Elford, was it, that were. Battling, I can't remember. I'm sure it was. Yeah, we definitely had a modern group at that first one. I'm, I'm mm. pretty sure it was you mm. that won. No, I'll tell you the one I won. I think it was with um, the South African, Ryan. Um, Ryan Hunt. Ryan Hunt. That's the one that was oh, a close. Yeah. Yes. KX, didn't they? That's right. Yeah, that was uh, that was the one I remember. It was oh, yeah. quite a. Yeah, quite close with him that, that weekend. As, yeah, but... as, we're, as we're on the Vets MXDN, and it's such a great, it's sort of almost become an institution now for motocross for me, and most probably, you know, we've got a lot of people watching live tonight, Greg, so that, you know, we've got over 130-odd people watching live tonight. Um, so yeah, actually, chosen... I think um, you put me right, um, Adam. I think on the, like we do this, Adam puts up... Um, for a better word, an advert, and I think the advert is at the most hits out of anybody we've done. I, I looked about eight and a half thousand hits for the advert, Adam. Yeah. So anyway, let's see. A, let's see if uh, a lap with Greg Anson at Farley Castle at, at Dave Vets MXDN's meeting. We'll have a quick look. Well, it's on a modern bike. We don't. They don't have modern bikes there anymore. But it was. This was before it really took off the Evo scene. So let's have a quick look. <laughs> Here we go, 2011 Vets MXDN when they had a modern group. Greg Hansen, a lap with the hurricane. As always, Greg flies out the gate, gets a good start. Really good out of the gate, Greg is. Pass the start finish, left hander. And it goes into that tight right hand where you want to be up the front here. Drop into the rut. Flat out down towards the orchard. Into the right hand, they're just over a little jump. Along this part of the track, it gets really rough. Also, some years it gets pretty foggy there. Before you come into this left hand and before you go up the hill towards the steps. Now, the steps have been worn away a bit over the years, so they're a lot easier now than what they used to be back in the 80s before we come into a left-hander again down the steps. A lot steeper than it looks if you've never been over or walked up or tried to walk up. You can't walk up a right hand over the jump through the wooded section. It gets really sketchy down here. Always a bit damp in the woods before you come to the right-hander where you ping it back up towards a little step-up jump. left hand, little tiny little spur and another left hander down into the arena where it gets to the quickest part of the track after this right hander little spur along here gets rough, oh, it's all rough at Farley, I reckon you get up the M4 motorway straight here, it's a long old straight, I don't know 60 to 70 miles an hour I expect, sweeping left before you come back down into the arena Quick jump this is, hard on the brakes before you get to the sweeping right, 
It's a real nice flowing track, Barley Castle. Little step up. Left hander by the hay barn. It's not there anymore. Down here it gets real rough. Slide your canvas, so it's pretty hard to go quick down there before you get into the last right hander. Then the left hand around the tree, the famous tree. A little spurt down there past the finish. That's a lap of barley. I think that was. I think that was 2011. Yeah, 2011 that was. Mm. Not bad. You were pretty quick there, Greg, for 47 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was time. still, I was still putting a lot of, lot of hours into my, you know, into a, into riding and my weeks and stuff. And you know, I was, I was involved with looking after riders as well. So it put me out on the track to, to ride, and it was just, you know, me it's just been my life really because i've always had the urge to, to to ride and try and ride as fast and as safe as i could you know and it was just i, I didn't know i because i kept so long into racing bikes i didn't really know much else you know apart from cars with with my family and um you know it's 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 that's it really so while the the work was still there with bikes uh, and riding and coaching uh, it, it's what i've done so i loved it I don't know if we, we had um, Jeff Stanton on a couple of weeks ago, Greg, and we were talking about, um, you know, when riding's been, motocross has been all your life and you're a bit of a one-trick pony, what the hell do you do to feel, to do after that? You know, I know I certainly, since I've stopped riding, you almost sort of, it's like a different life. You don't know what, what to do. Um, you know, how, how have you, I mean, obviously you've done it at a completely different level than 99% of, of other people. How have you coped with it since you've had to stop riding? Well, this is, this has been really, really tough for me. You know, not only has my life completely changed after two and a half years ago when, when the accident happened, you know, COVID as well has really sort of pulled us all sort of back as, as well. And it's, it's, I'm the best I've been at the moment, but it's took a long time, you know, from from recovering and slowly getting better and better, and then wondering, God, who who am I? Because I'm not I'm not the person I was at all. But it's the fact that my life has had to completely change, and no swinging my leg over a bike for one um, has been so so difficult because you know it's 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 all I've ever done. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really been a tough time for me. You know, I've kept, I've kept, you know, my chin up and try to deal with it and, and, and am dealing with it, but you know, it's, it's just, it's just, I've only ever known motorbikes and now I can't do motorbikes anymore. You know, I can watch them. I can, I can, you know, give advice, which I've done a little bit, but you know, I, I, I just, motorbike's been the thing it's really really weird that it, it it's you know you've got to you've got you've got to go in another well, direction you yeah know? it's kind of weird isn't it because you 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 know when you're like in your 40s and you're still riding fast you think well this is going to go on forever nothing's ever going to stop me racing and when well, that day, day finally comes it's wow well, jesus you know what next and well, then what, what makes it worse as well with you know, with the internet, as you see everybody else having a good time, mm. and you just, you know, wish it that was me. Well, you just said it there, Dave, that you, you, you're going well and you, you, you're going fast, and then you think you're invincible. Really, I, I've rode so many years at uh, a, a, a fairly good level, and you really do think you're invincible. Now, what happened to me? It destroyed all of that in in one just just like that it went bang stop you know and when you're riding bikes and you crash and you break yourself up and you think oh that's enough and then you get mended and you say right i'm going again because you it's all you know yeah because you've done that you've done that a few times haven't you? yeah i have i have and like this time is like that's that's it that's telling you to stop you've been very very lucky now stop you know and and that's what i've had to do um but as you probably know, Dave, there's been people talking about 
bikes to ride at the at, at your meeting and i would love to do it um whether i do or not is is another thing but on you know if anything does happen for this year and it it, it goes ahead and it might be the last chance of us three brothers getting together again you know um and the bike i'm talking about is a ksi honda you know that that's um that's been talking about um and i've always said the last four or five years i've said to them i'd love to ride that bike and, is that, uh, have you got one in the family then sorry have you got one of those bikes in the family no i'm speaking to dick um oh, right, dick, yeah, yeah and um I've, I've always said to him i said i'd love to ride it i just love the i love the look look of the bike and he said yeah okay if you want to this year you can oh, as long right. as you get the pass and and what have you and uh it's something i'd love to do so so, so it's not over yet <laughs> um well <laughs> oh. it, might be. it, it might depends be. it's it depends if his wife's jackie's yeah, watching she, this live she's just out of screen and she's just out of screen about to... <laughs> um <laughs> i'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna have to use uh, a bit more charm and what have you that I've used. Yeah, I can stuff. remember a couple of years ago, and I don't want to ever read it again. You know, reading pretty much your, your obituary on Facebook, somebody had posted up, sad to hear about, um, you know, Greg dying, and like the the uh, Facebook went bananas for about an hour until I can't remember what it was, but somebody had, you know come on and put, put everybody right that. Yeah, we haven't yeah. rid of him yet. He's he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember someone telling me that that post actually went up, you know, because it, it on the day of the the what happened, it was um it looked that way, you know. So it was I was out for so long, and uh, to be honest with you, you know, and, and what the doctors said afterwards when I met them, they said no way should have oh, I've got through it. So you know, it was it was that touch and go really. So um yeah but I, I got through it thank god and i'm here so, absolutely yeah. so yeah it's a it's a real strange I, I, for me i think i suppose it's a real strange one that you, when you've done like you say you've done something for so long and to try and get it out of your system it's like i keep you trying to exp it's happen. impossible to it's sort of impossible to explain to people the feeling or what it is that makes you want to do it like I said before, like a friend of mine, David Sterland, quadriplegic, you know him yourself, Greg. I've got I'm really good friends and I can ask him anything. He's most probably watching tonight. Hi, David, if you're watching. All right, I, said, I said, you know, if you if you could walk again, what would you would you get on a bike? He said, oh, yeah. He said, I'd most probably be the first thing I'd do. Yeah. Mm. It's just one of those things it's in your blood or especially well, yours well it's, it's it's difficult for me because i can't do nothing else very well, <laughs> well that's, 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 that's the problem for most of us Greg. We're all, you know guys of our sort of age i'm probably a little bit older than you we're just one trick ponies and uh, you know what else do you do well you know i i i, I one I think to myself sometimes, why didn't you stop earlier and actually go, you know, like my brothers did and go into business, you know, and do something properly. But it was just there. And that's, that's all I wanted to do. You know, so I knew it and I was, I, I, I had such good rapport with such so many youngsters throughout the last 20 years. So, and I still have them talk to me now and say, you know, the youngsters come to me and say, God, it, Greg, it was the best time of my life, my young years, you know, of what we've done together and that the coaching and, you know, I always, I always run a team. I like putting teams together because I like to work with them week in, week out, you know, and seasons and stuff. And it was just, just such a buzz for me and ride with them and race, you know, still race as well. It was just, it was just my life really. And it, it worked very well. But how, it's, uh, how did, yeah. how did the, um, going to New Zealand come about, Greg? It was just like out of the blue or how? Did well, it was funny because I I just won the British British Championship and then, you know, uh, Perry gave me a call, Perry Leesk, and uh, he said, look, um, we've got a one two five space available. You know, um, would you come over to New Zealand and and race a one two five championships? And 
I, I didn't know Perry that well. I was, I really sort of didn't know the, the top boys. And um, I said, yeah, all right then, I'll do that. Taking into account I'd never been on a plane before. <laughs> so... Um, I, yeah. Flight, yeah, yeah, God almighty. And I absolutely can't stand flying. I have sweaty palms from start to finish. So um, that was first first time meeting Perry properly, you know, and um, went out there and, uh, yeah, w w won the championship. And, it, wow, what what a absolutely fantastic experience meeting Don Perry out there, the the team green guy and, and – you know, it was just, it was just amazing. It was amazing. Like Greg, so I've seen some yeah. pictures, current ones, and they just look unreal. And all like that, natural and just hilly and just flat out. And the 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 New Zealand people and riders, they're just they're they're fantastic people. They just they're just loose. They come all loose up here. You know, look mad, crazy, crazy, funny people. <laughs> And it was just such a fantastic time. And, you know, Perry, we've just been such good friends since because he, he, he stepped it up another gear for me because it gave me so much confidence of, of being out there and, and doing that as well, you know. I actually raised a young Daryl King out there. He was only 15, at, 15 or 16 at the time, yeah. So it I was, just, seen, yeah. just seeing that picture reminded me, otherwise I forget it, the Union Jack helmet. Where did that all come from? Um, that was Keith and me that would, we just tape, got the, um, adhesive tape and just, just made them, just done them with no way. tape. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously later in the years you, you got them painted, but it was, it, that's what we wanted to do. So yeah. Um, Ken, Ken was the one that started the army jackets yeah. and we ro wore that until we lost too much weight. <laughs> <We're sweating. laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was it was yeah it, stayed, it stuck really it stuck for years didn't it so yeah absolutely it, it, it it's your like, trademark through the 80s isn't it mm. it was yeah, so it very, was. very easily identifiable on the track yeah yeah did did you have a choice greg when you went to new zealand because in 86 you won the 125 championship out there and in 87 it was the 500 championship or did you take your pick of what you wanted to ride no it wasn't a choice really um i think they wanted me to go back to the 125 again in 87 but ali could move me from 125 when i won uh no he, he well basically Alec wanted me to ride 500s because it was that year that coming back that was a year i was doing the 500 grand prix so he i uh, if i went out there again i had to ride 500s so uh the 86 i won the 125 and then i went and won the 500 the following year which i was i was over the moon about because there was very good riders out there that knew their tracks out there you know and um murray anderson i think was one of the riders um that was up there and yeah um brian patterson was very very good as well another new zealander so you're just talking about um, oh, when you uh, as well when you came back and rode for Alec Wright, Team Green, do, do I remember right that you had year-old works bikes for some of the events? <laughs> I had um, I had a 250 X Joe Bay uh, Stadium Supercross bike. Oh, wow. Uh, that was the only one I've got. And Alec said, that's as a spare. He said, but you don't ever use it. So obviously, one then I, I used it at one meeting because my bike broke down and I got a right bollocking. But it would, it, <laughs> it was yeah. Bike that you've been given. yeah, yeah, and I, I, I used it, but he, he, he said, look, he, he, I don't know why. He said it's there as a spare to rob bits off of, but I had to take the bike out and, and ride it. And uh, yeah, yeah two fifty X Joe Bay Supercross thing. All right. What, nice the joke in England at that, at that um, Chelsea Supercross was that's it? That's it. Yeah, that's a that's a. I think that's the day I I I took it out, and um, yeah, I can't I can't remember clearly, but I did get it in the roll. And it you never like got, a, got, go on. You never got yeah. any works five hundreds. No, it was always stock stuff. I never never got any special stuff apart from the CCM thing. That was that was something. Christ, but, um, yeah. Was was that your first year of GPs then, Greg? Eighty seven. 
87 yes that's right and you know it's like dave you know mentioned that he was always i was always no problem at grand prix but i started grand prix in at like 87 and i finished in 89 when i broke my leg on the ccm and you know in between that in 87 when i started i only lasted four or five rounds because i think it was sittendorf i went down on i was don't know what position I was in, but I went down on the corner and I was wearing the laser open face helmet and I went bang on my head and I was out like a light and woke up in hospital. So that was the end of that year. And then the following year, I had another injury, I think a knee injury. And my Grand Prix sort of experience is very, very limited. You know, I've never done probably, I've never done a full season. And I probably, of course, 20 or 30 grand prix maximum i say in total so my experience at grand prix were started at like 22 23 and finished a couple of years later so, so it was um the ccm yeah. thing, greg how, how did that all come about well <clears throat> i had <laughs> i had done two years with kawasaki and the the, the contract was there for the following year uh, with alec and um which would have been 80, 89 you went on the I, that's it well in 88 i went to bletchenden to watch one of my nephews race and i saw austin there on this this ccm and i looked at it and i go wow and i spoke with austin and he told me about it and he said yes yeah, it's, it's a pre-production blah 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 anyway i went home and i i rang austin during the week and said look austin i'd love to ride one of them he said, yeah, but you're, you're sorted with Team Green. I said, look, if if you want to do something with it, I'm interested. So I went up to the factory in Bolton and uh, I agreed to deal with them. It was a really nice deal to do Grand Prix in 89. They didn't want to do Grand Prix till 90. They wanted a year to develop the bike, but they decided to go a year early because I was keen to ride it. And I wanted to ride it purely because it was... A British based bike and it was CCM and it was four stroke, which wasn't around at the time, you see. It was very different, wasn't it? Uh, and it was a really it was a very, very big risk, you know, because it was not it was not as competitive as, as the two strokes, but it's just something I wanted to do. And I just really sort of gelled with Austin and, and Alan. And uh it's a shame I broke my leg at the, the third Grand Prix because it was just going so nice you know it was just i i loved being part of it and developing the bike and it was a cracking big it was a, we had to sleeve the 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 rotax engine down to a 500 and it just revved and revved and revved it was just fantastic yeah it was it was good but i i, I actually ended up with that probably i don't know how long was it ago 15 years ago i bought it off of austin really wow yeah, yeah. Actually, it was probably longer than that. It was twenty years ago. It was when when CCM went bust around the year two thousand. Right. I went up to his house, and a friend bought a four-stroke, um, you know, old twin shock off of him, and I bought that one. Uh, wow. It was it was a special bit of bit of kit. It was it was a really really nice bike, really nice bike. Not that I ever rode it, but did you it was did just you look nice. into it and see all the things that had been I, cut? You know, and... come on shame i didn't no i didn't mess around with it at all i just it was just like a time capsule it was just it just looked like it had been taken off the track and and um you know put aside but it was a really um, it was all it was you could tell it was a special special yeah. thing the, the frame number was double o double o one was it uh, yeah yeah so yeah it was uh, a nice bit of kit yeah where, they put a lot a lot of time into that yeah. where any any ideas where that bike is now Yes, it, it, uh, I think it's in. Well, it's, it'll definitely be in Wales, and I think it's uh, with the factory in Wales. Yeah, it has, it has been out a few times. I think actually, Greg's ridden it. I uh, did do it a few years ago. I done a parade lap on it, didn't I? You did. Yeah, you did. yeah. yeah very same bike. Yeah, mm. it's still about it. What What was so special about the bike then, Greg? Like when you say, did you? Um, take they had. They had shaved a lot off of it to get the weight down. Um, they had made it a five hundred. Um, yeah, it was a huge disadvantage to the to the other bikes because it had to be the same CC. Yeah, it was a four stroke. Exactly. 
Yeah, yeah, and it was down on down on power. But yeah. when we were on the slick tracks, the amount of grip you got was unbelievable. So we made it up in that in that way, and also it was very very front heavy. So coming off the line, it was like you had a whole shot device on, so you could actually gate always in front of people because you just drop the clutch and it drive, so it wasn't lifting. So you had your advantages with it, um, but. Actually, when you're, you know, out and out power with the 500s, you couldn't couldn't run with them. But it, so that, a, did you say it was Italy? You broke your leg. Yeah, it was the third round I'd done. I qualified at the first round. I didn't qualify at the second round. I qualified in Italy the third round, and it was the Sunday morning when you were sort of going around for grid positions, and I just dropping into a corner, and you a little hump going into a corner and you just blip it to jump into the corner and I hit a neutral and uh, so I blipped it and nothing there and it just went over the, I went over the top of it and it come down and hit me on the leg I think and, you told uh, me wasn't it, was it Dave Thorpe that helped you get home from that event? Yeah, he, he because on the way out there Jason Guttridge my nephew, he was driving the, the van out there and uh, that broke down on the way out so he got a higher van so he was out there in a higher van and um yeah uh dave paid rush to get back he he gave jason the money to to get back so exactly. those, yeah. those are the stories that you know nobody ever gets to really hear do they no you know, they don't you know the english guys they stuck pretty much stuck together yeah and as it was um obviously i went to the um italian hospital and i, I broke my femur and um i said no listening to them in hospital and how mad they were i said i want to have this done at home so uh ccm paid for me to have a flight home and i had to have six seats laid down they folded the seats down and i had six seats laid down on, on a plane on oh, the way broke home the yeah Christ. broke the femur that was it so um i had i come home and had the operation done at home so that, dave thought said you was his uk nemesis uh obviously riding in the UK, but when you went to travel abroad and stuff, you, you didn't shine as, as you should have shined, did you, Sean? What do you think about that, Greg? Do you, was it the pre was it just pressure or just? It was it was my inexperience with the, with the um, tracks abroad, I think. Um, and it it's always took me a long time to build confidence. Now, I believe, you know, I... I only had Charlie with me, helping me through through my career, and I just I feel as though I needed someone by my side that could tell me how to make the the moves that I needed to make to make myself better. Because people tell me I always had you know the speed and the, the bits and pieces that could make me good, and I just I think for one the Farley Castle Grand Prix where I was lying fourth and running with Job just in front of me and I was holding it nicely for 20 minutes and I got a puncture. I think if I'd have held that fourth, that would have been the, the kickstart to, to maybe believe in that I could, you know, get them results, you know? So it's just, I had so much, so lack of experience with Grand Prix that it's, it's just, I needed, I didn't needed more experience really. And then I needed that one result that would tell me like you can do it. You know, because we all need to, we all run off confidence and belief. And I just needed to get that really. But at home, because I knew all the tracks, I, I raced with David, you know, year, for years at home. And uh, he, he definitely pulled us along, didn't he? You know, because knowing that he was the number one man. It wasn't easy. D doing the GPs in the 80s, my God, it was absolutely stacked. Even if, if you qualified for a Grand Prix, that was, you know, a huge result. There was there was plenty of Brits that used to go with you that, that tried and and didn't, yeah. you know, didn't fare as well as you. You you had 80 riders out there qualifying for 40 positions, always minimum 80 riders. And um, they were good. Only riders that went out there that had belief that they could qualify. So they, were all, they all knew what they were doing and... Because you all have no. to be, a certain, you know, a certain standard. Otherwise, that you wouldn't yeah. even be able to get on that list to, to go out there. That's right. And you know, we had we had eight or ten British riders that were out there regularly qualifying. So 
you know, it was it was good for us. Did um <laughs> did you ride the Mur, Greg? I did, yeah. I did. What was your experience of, of that place? Fantastic. I loved it. Um I think that I rode it twice and I qualified once. In fact, the first time I was in a really good qualifying position and, and uh, Delaney speaks about it actually because I think it was Lawrence that had crashed or something and uh, Alex said, go and find him. And uh, he said, when you have, like, go back into the pits because you're qualified. I think I was like sixth or seventh. And uh, anyway, found him and then I went back to the pits and the track sped up. It got, got faster and faster and uh, I went out of qualifying position. So I didn't qualify that year. I blame Alec on that one, but he qualified the other year, and uh, yeah, I can't I can't remember the results, but what a fantastic! I loved the track, I really did love it, especially coming into that, you know, arena. It was it was something else. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah. Very I've good. I've uh, me and Dave have <laughs> rode around the car park. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've ridden the track myself. Oh, have you rode the track, Dave? No, I have. I was very lucky. We went there. Well, I rode it on a trials bike in uh, 1990 when we on the Saturday night pissed up. But uh, <laughs> I was uh, 2004 when they had um, they had a thing there called the Monte Namur, which was I think on the Saturday of the Grand Prix, and it was like an pretty much like an enduro. There was like I don't know 100 riders that paid their money and we had an hour or so to go around the track as many times as you wanted and it was just brilliant wow it was like an enduro wow. I, I, oh, fair play to you guys actually racing it and the, and the some of those downhills are just they want to kill you but yeah brilliant it's, brilliant. it's funny when you're racing around there you don't think of the trees and that that, that that close to you and going along past the pub at the bottom and you hit that jump and you really do launch that and you've seen some people get right out of shape there it doesn't it doesn't cross your mind that how close stuff is you know it's it's really weird because you're in you're in sort of racing mode really and yeah you know, absolutely. What, what happens happens but you no know, it's just it's well, wow like i was just so so fortunate i was allowed to ride it you know or race it so so you, you did the gp then that must have been about 87 or 88 87 and 87 and 88 yes them two years okay. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, loved what, it. What was what was your favourite track you rode on, Greg? Or, Probably uh, Don John D'Angeli, I think, is the best one for me. Uh, John D'Angeli or Castano de Levi's? Yeah, which yeah. which one has they been recently using? What's the last one they used? John. John, I've, John, seen, John. I've seen pictures of you on the ccm there where you've got a horde of french guys looking at your bike which i think must have been 89 and what track was that well i don't i don't think it unless it was on the saturday because from my memory that the 89 gp in france was really muddy mm -hmm. and it, it didn't look like it it might have been like a french international or something yeah that was the one that that track was the one that they've re last used at grand prix which was Oh, so I'll get muddled up with the two tracks. St. John um, is down, um, like Bordeaux way. Okay. Well, the one track, I'd I done an international there with David and Kurt and that um, in 89 with his CCM. And I think I got fourth in this international. And um, it was just, the, the track was just up one side and down the other. And yeah, it was, I can't remember which track it was. Yeah. Did you enjoy those those French tracks? Oh, I always done well yeah. in the French internationals. Always done well. Do you remember that yeah. track we went to with the MR at St Briac? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Never been up summit so steep in all I know. My life. Wasn't that that good? was unbelievable. Those yeah. Yeah, those meetings were mustard. They were just yeah. absolutely brilliant. Yeah, but yeah. Did you, I think you won there, didn't you? I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah, that would have yeah, been about yeah. 99, 2000 sort of era. Might have been yeah, 99, 2000, yeah. We started yeah. The, it started the four strokes, didn't we, in 98, didn't we? Was it? the Yamahas, yeah. But it uh, might have been 99, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, a good track. I, I and that was, that was when um, Stuart Penny had done a lap 
on his little school, wasn't it? Was it? I don't remember that. <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. we're, we're all older. We're all from the older crew of, of what I would call scrambling, motocross, whatever you want to call it. And the track questions gets brought up all the time. But I, I was, I've been thinking about it a lot lately, and they're saying about slow tracks down and this, that, the other. And then you mentioned a track earlier, which is that picture of you and you and David there. Yeah, Streetly Hills. That's straight. You know, talk, when you, I don't know if you've ever been there, Dave. There yeah, was I only once in a freezing cold '86 early season, and it was the grain was solid. It was, it was just, it. it was right on ice. That was the only time I went there. But yeah, fantastic track. But how fast mm. would you reckon you would have been? going greg up those straights and that you know that well, long it, straight it, is... it was a start straight wasn't it a start yeah. straight i think was fifth gear by the time you got to break him you know it was <laughs> right from the bottom to the top and i think you you you're hard hard revving in fourth gear you know so it was it was a fast circuit and it was one of my favorite tracks i would say that was probably my favorite track along with um along Matcham. with El- 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 ellsworth for me that was it that looks like Matchams. no that that's that's streetly. Oh, is it? No yeah. way. Mm. Wow. We're very really streetly. I remember Just going there. I don't remember by Goring, was. Goring on Thames, mm. which is near what big? Uh, I th- same old thing. I think uh, I think um, a barrister got it shut down um, because they built like the toilet blocks and all that's that right. and showers without planning permission. And, yeah. And right. yeah. Who knows? I don't know whether that's the true mm-hmm. story. And now it belongs to the National Trust. Wow. But, um, what about um, Fox Hills, Greg? What did you think of that place? Because I tell you why. I'm just going to bring a little picture up for people that know Greg and know this. This, this for me, that was the original Fox Hills. It's not. That's actually a schoolboy scramble track that was back in the late 70s, 80s called White Horse Hill. And it was White Horse much, Hill, yes, 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 yes. It was pretty much the same as Fox Hills, you know, in a valley. Yeah. It's just down the road. Yeah. Yeah, is that right? I never knew that. Did, what was, did they, I thought um, Fox Hills was just like a fresh track in about eighty five. I never realised it was used for schoolboys. No, no, it wasn't. This is a different place, Dave. But it's very. That's what I was saying. Oh, to, to me, but that's very, like, very similar. You know, that was a sort of yeah. the original Fox Hills. I would say it was a it was a Vale of the White Horse Schoolboy Scramble Club track called White Horse Hill. But it's like in a big valley, exactly the same as Fox Hill. So I just sort of bring it up. And what, what what did you think of Fox Hills, Greg? Oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was again fast and flowing for me, jumpy, and um, yeah. It's, I, I think I had a I had a second in an international there. I think um, one year with with a few good riders there. So that it 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 worked for me. Yeah, if you could gate there and you had to gate, didn't you? So. Because it used to come through the valley right up the side and it just like come to a bottleneck, didn't it, years ago in the uh, like 85, 86 when it it first opened. Just come through the valley and up a hill into a left hand. So if you didn't get out the gate. Yeah, it was. You're saying saying about the jumps, Greg, you were really one of the few sort of what I would call the old school riders that that really, right up until the end, you, you actually liked the jumpy tracks. Yeah, it was, and again, I think that was due to when I was when I was on the farm. When we had a little bit of land in the corner of the farm, we never used to ride the whole field, and we had a basically a figure of eight. And in the middle, we had a we had a jump like that, a, just a mound of earth. And I used to launch this jump both ways, you know. And and it just it, it obviously taught me, didn't it? It obviously taught me to be in the air and heavy landings and stuff. And it was weird because I remember going to Tow Law, I think, up up north in the one two five, and there was this sleeper ramp like that. <laughs> I just I just hit it absolutely flat out. No one else would do it, you know. And it's just through learning from from like day one of of jumps like this, and then you had to learn later in years to land on the downslope <laughs> afterwards. So, I know, I know that. Yeah, well, but, well, yeah. Where was the where was the race? I'm sure there's a picture of you you on the top rostrum, Dave Thorpe next to you, and somebody else. Or am I just imagining that? You're imagining that. I don't think I ever done him. I might have done. <laughs> Perhaps somebody <laughs> superimposed it. 
<laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> I'm Matchums, Frank. Did you like writing Matchums? I didn't mind it. Um, I think the, the problem was for me, uh, when I went into the big class, um, I've always been sort of very slightly built. And um, I remember when Alex said that, like, the next year, Ace, you're going to be riding 500s. I spent a winter of, you know, taking on the powders and food and all the cardio and stuff. And my back went very, very quickly because I wanted to gain another stone to try and get the strength. And so I had to back off with all that. And uh, I was just a, a, a sort of a skinny sort of 11 stone. And uh, the trouble is with, with sand tracks, you, it's so physical. And I was never physically strong enough. I always had the fitness, but my fitness was was fine for the smaller bikes, I think. And uh, I, I I just wish I had the opportunity to do like Grand Prix on a you know on a on a decent one two five. That would have been something I would have loved to have done. But never got the opportunity. I I where where I was you know in my financial position, I had to go where the deals were at the time. And uh, you know at that day, my deals were good, but it wasn't always on the probably the right bike, you know, yeah. C I mean, C C wise. C C. Yeah. Deal we had in the one two five class, was there? No, there wasn't. That was a problem. That was a problem. But there you go. I mean, I think you got to you got to give it the best of whatever you've been given in front of you. And you know, I I, I feel as though I'd done that. I could have probably done better. I could have worked harder, maybe. But I just needed that person beside me to tell me, right, this is what you've got to do now. And you know, I didn't I didn't have that person, you know. Talk, talking of talking of riding tracks, I've got a little bit of a clip up here, and it's got a classic Murray Walker faux pas bit, you know, where he gets the rider's name wrong. But I don't think they'd have ridden this track this day and age if it was as bad as this. Check it out, everyone. Is coming from not a day to the slick tyres. There's somebody in there somewhere. I hope it's not David Thorpe, the world champion. He's taking part in our event. A day for the Massey Fergusons rather than the Hondas, I would have thought. A little wheel spin, but just look at that net. Terrible conditions for our motocross, but they love this, the motocross boys, you know. There they go. Down he goes. <laughs> They're trying to find someone with a bloodhound. There isn't a bloodhound. Um, anyway, this was the position. Russ Jarman. Russ Jarman is actually one of the seven one of the seven competitors who've scored in both legs so far and was lying in fifth place overall when he began this final leg. So if he finishes it, he'll be well up there. Is Craig Hansen that we haven't seen much of so far, but is in third position, desperately chasing Jared Smith. Hansen, who comes from high, there he goes from High Wickham fourth in the British Championship last year, just come back from quite a long stint in New Zealand, tremendously successful, because he won the New Zealand Championship. Having won the British 125 Championship last year, went extremely well in practice, led the first leg here this afternoon for a couple of laps, only to strike trouble. So there is the big Kawasaki of Greg Hansen, who will be showing well, I'm sure, in the British Championship and International this year. There's a big international race on in France, actually, today. But uh, the top riders that you see here have decided to forego that in order to ride here at Canada Heights. Whether they will think that's the wisest thing to have done with this dreadful ground conditions, I don't know. But there, there goes Hanson, third place ahead of him and firmly ahead of him at the moment is Jared Smith. <laughs> Jared Smith, number five. And then he turns into Greg Hansen. <laughs> yeah, I'll marry, marry Walker. Birds meeting, wasn't it, Greg? Sorry? Was that the early birds meeting they used to call it? It, it was, yeah, it was. And uh, it's a bit of a shock, really, because like he just said, it, it, I'd just been in New Zealand for, for a couple of months and it was very hot out there. So coming back to our sort of winter was uh, and wet was uh, was not, not fun. But it was a good good day. Hard work, really hard work all day that was. You know, I saw eyes at the end of the day, but it was, uh, it was good. 
how muddy that looked there. I mean, when you mm. think of Canada Heights, you think of sand and it wouldn't get like that, but mm. that looked like a load of porridge, didn't it? That was that was horrible. It was horrible, but uh, yeah, just muscled away for it. It was a good day, good day. But I was I was like I'd, I'd had two months of good riding, so I'd had plenty of, plenty of time on the bike. So did you ever did you ever get any like um, calls to do the uh, motocross designations at all? Or any, yeah, I done, I done the designations in eighty six uh, at Unadilla, so that was that was really really exciting. It was <laughs> nice to ride. This. Gets much better than that. It was it was good on the Saturday. Uh, it was nice on the Saturday. The weather was good, and I was riding around there thinking, "How rough is this?" <laughs> you know that that hill that they never grade. Um, and uh, it was it was so rough, but what a track! What a track to ride! And then so who, Sunday, who was the team? You were on the one two five. I was on the one two five. Rob Herring two fifty, and Kurt on the five hundred. And uh, so yeah, it was eighty six. You say? No, I can't. Where was Dave? Eighty six. Eighty six. He would have won the title. So surely he would have been on the team that year. Is it not eighty seven? Might have been eighty seven then. Might have been eighty seven. Yeah. Yeah. When he broke his leg, I suppose. Mm. Could have been. I, what, um, was, what was that like? Um because that Bob Hanna was there racing that day, wasn't he? Yeah, I Bob Hanna was going quite quickly that day, uh, like in the wet. <laughs> and uh yeah, he lapped me. He lapped me. Yeah. But no, was, uh, but that, that's no that's, achievement just to be picked for the team just to be yeah there. of course i think i think i had ninth in one of the race ninth and seventh or something like that it was in the one two five class but we were a long way down you know on the second row of the start as well so you was up against it with it so heavy and stuff but yeah you just went out just went out and worked as hard as i could for it you know but um it was just it was just you know again to be picked yeah. It was fantastic. Did you, pick your country? Did you get lent bikes when you were in the States? Uh, I think I, my bike was flown out there. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was, yeah. Because, yeah, it was Steve Goodyear. Steve Goodyear came out with me. And, uh, yeah, it was flown out. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot now, Greg. Your 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 um, motocross designations team manager, any era, any rider... You know any country, and you got to pick three riders. Who would it be? That's put you. What now? Well, yeah, now you know from, from, from any from any era. Who would you have three, on your team? Three, three British riders. Well, let's go British, and you can go world, but let's do British. Present or past? Present, put a, past. Put a, put a, yeah. put a British British team and, together. And, yeah. British. Present, many, many present or. From any era, present or past? A British team? Yeah. Dave Thorpe. Paul Malin, Jamie Dobb. There you go. That's going to be our question to every interviewee we do now. <laughs> See you there, Jews. <laughs> Who would you have then, Adam? I'd go, I'd go Jeff Smith. Obviously, Dave Thorpe and Kurt Nickel. That's all I'd go for. Definitely. What about yourself, mm. Dave? Um, I would. Uh, Jeremy Watley would be on the team. Oh yeah, I forgot about Jen. Yeah, <laughs> local hero. Jeremy Watley. It's got to be Dave Thorpe. Crikey! Graham <laughs> Noyce. Yeah, Noycey. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Who was your favourite rider, Greg? My favourite rider was um, when I was very young, um, gone to Farley, and I saw Jack Van Veethoven. I liked him. Um, my favourite rider, present rider, is Arnold Tonus. Um, favourite rider, favourite rider ever. Oh, it's got to be Jean Michel Bale, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Back, yeah. back, when, you know, when you were racing proper, Greg, through the eighties, was was there anybody that was like coming up through the ranks with you that you, you know, was always there or thereabouts with you in the racing? 
No, can't, can't, no. That's, that's a tough one, that is, because there were so many. Um, no, can't think of anyone. Jonathan Pettit was 10 years behind me, but he was local to me, and that's someone I I considered to be a good little rider that I wish I could have got inside his head because I could have made, I'm, I'm sure I could have helped him, but he was a classy little rider. He's still, he's still quick now. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I liked him. I liked Johnny. Um, it was, I, I, I have to say this now, I had a, my nephew, um, I had a few riders, you know, family that rode, but um, Jamie, little Jamie Guttridge, um, I, he, he had a bad injury when he was 15, uh, King's Clear, and he broke his hip. Uh, I do believe that he would have he would have come through and come through with me, you know. Um, he was a ballsy little rider, and just just his attitude now, you know. He, I knew that I know that he would have been a strong-minded little rider, and he could ride as well, along with Wayne, the other nephew who who sort of give up sort of early in his career. But um, yeah. But one two five team, Greg. In was it ninety two? The Hanson Honda team. Oh, blimey. 94, sorry. 94, yeah, 94. Yeah, okay. that, that, was a good, that was a good year for me yeah, because... You had results on that, didn't you? Yeah, what, it, all it was, Dave, was um, we had a good engine that year. It was, there was a, 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 an over-the-counter thing you could buy, kit, that worked, properly worked, but you had to run it with race fuel, and it properly worked, and I, I what, remember... What was the kit? It was a Pigeon kit. That's it. Yeah. Pichon kit, as in Mikel Pichon. Yeah, and it, all it was was a head and barrel, and um, <clears throat> you had to run it on race fuel. Honestly, it was such a cracking bit of kit, and I was very, very competitive that year in the one two fives at what twenty eight, twenty nine. Well, you had and, to buy a Honda dealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bought off a Honda dealer. Never heard of that. Yeah, and it it was so so good, and I. I did have a chance of you know, winning that. I was leading that championship before I, I crashed at Fox Hill and broke my wrist. Yeah, because how, how old were you when you were doing that? Yeah, 29. 29. I was old then. Oh, I, <laughs> think, I think I was there. I think, did, didn't you over jump the. You over, I think I actually remember seeing you do that. You over jumped the last jump as you come through the valley. That's right. I didn't over jump it. When I took off, I hit a little hump, a little bump at the top of the jump, and it pitched me up. And I landed, I nose dived, and where I was holding it flat out, it just snapped my wrist there. It, I didn't fall off. I, yeah, I that's what go, I mean. I remember it. Yeah. I had to go over the next jump with this broken wrist, and I pulled up, lent the bike up, and I was running around like an Edwig's chicken because the, the, it was like that. It was oh, properly man. broken. And the doctor said, when I had it fixed, he said, you'll never ride a motorbike again. He said, that is way, way gone. And it, I've never had a moment's problem from it since. It's been absolutely fine. Well, well, Greg, I tell you what, we've been going a, an hour and a half nearly. God, and I've loved every Good. minute of it. And I, I really think, have. I think the people at home, the reason why I'm saying that is because I've got loads of messages. Everybody's just putting loads of likes and putting messages up. So I thought we'd bring some of the people's messages up. Uh, there's your nephew, Jamie. Can you see that on the screen? I haven't. Hey. No, that that was that was black currant juice tonight, Jamie. <laughs> Honestly. Jamie is the rider who Greg was talking about, who's the same age as me, and bless him, he's had four hip replacements at 47, 48 years old. Yeah. What, through so, motocross. Through motocross, yeah. Because he had a bad crash at King's Clear. I was actually there that day. So hello, Jamie. Hope you're well, mate. All right, wait. Daryl West. We haven't, we haven't even talked half about Greg really had two careers. He had a professional career and then like... When oh, the... yeah, we, we, we don't have to go. I was just going to bring these up because I didn't want people to see them. Hi, oh, Greg, I was married out scrambling when you made it big. I travelled miles to watch Ken. Really pleased how well you did. Can you see these coming up, Greg? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thought you was a member of the Dunlops. Somebody did. <laughs> Tim Hill. Yeah, 
Tim Beatty watched Greg scream the one, two, five Suzuki. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I remember oh, that. We got American, our American friend from comes to Farley. American Irish friend. Yeah. The centre spread of him on the KX right over dragging the bars and dirt bike rider 87 is so bitching. <laughs> so bitching, man. Nice one, Rory. <laughs> Oh, there's so many nice uh, loads of loads of people have put put stuff up. God, I've yeah, no, done what, what, you know, the, really, you, I suppose the almost that um, well that MR series and when that YZ400 came out, that was almost like made for you. Yeah, that whole, definitely. You just took to that like a duck to water. I think. Yeah, I that absolutely you, loved it. It was you yeah. and Prattley. Um, there was tons of things. You weren't really old guys, but you the guys that were sort of at the tail of a professional career. And that that um, that series at that time just hit the nail right on the head. The tracks were fantastic. There was about 20, 20 rounds a year, I think, plus the internationals. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was just um, just a brilliant time, I think. It, it was it was and the the four hundred. It was, um, uh, and Ricky, pretty, yeah. uh, Ricky, of course, Ricky was yeah. there as well. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, he was hard work. He was, <laughs> no, but you know, Ricky, would yeah, have been good, good friend of mine, Ricky, good yeah, friend Ricky's, of mine. Fair, Ricky's a fair bit younger than you, though, isn't he? Yeah, 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 most are. <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> but when, when you were riding, um, yeah, of course. Yeah, Factory Field was there as well. When you were um, you were riding in that series, were you like a sponsored rider then? No, no. It's ninety eight. That was that was Keith again. Keith was looking after me then. Okay. Yeah. Can you read yeah. that? So I've got someone watching from New Zealand. Graham, Graham Allen. Allen. Graham, you're right. I will see you soon, Graham. Good man. That was he was with Team Green with us when we were racing in New Zealand. And a t uh, New Zealand champion as well. Oh, fantastic! And he, uh, yeah. There you go. That photo was at our farm. That's it. Yes, it was it. Graham's farm. That's right. Yeah. That's Can right. we all and come to your farm, Graham? Please, <laughs> if you're still watching, it's the sort and, of tracks we like to ride. And Graham can drive a car on the uh, race car. He's he's got an old race car and he drives it so quick. Uh, I've been watching yeah, him on that. We should, we should all get all club all, all chuck in a couple of grand. I, Block, book a plane, add their old COVID test, all will be free of that, and hop over there for a couple of weekends. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a good never, bit. Good bit never of info. Oh, it's a <laughs> really perfect season for, for Dave. Dave Graham, loves yeah. me for that. He does, he tells me. <laughs> season for Dave Thorpe beating him in a moto at Houston, Cornwall. What, well, tell us about that. It was um, in 86, wasn't it? 80, yeah, 86. It was a weird one, actually, because um, David had won for the last two seasons. And um, not, uh, Charlie had said to me, Charlie Ford said, look, we, you know, the deal ain't there for next year and you've got to pull some out of the bag to, tomorrow, really, because you, you're sort of there and thereabouts. And... Uh, you know, we need we need a result tomorrow, and I knew the track suited me anyway. It's the first time we rode it there, but I was thinking today if this question come up, there was something I'd done to the bike. It was a it was a very fast grassy flat track. Bike we I, wound, I wound the back end up. I wound the rear end of the bike up, so it was quite a lot more solid. You know, it wasn't. So I very I run a very soft back end normally, so I wound it up. I remember winding it up the, the night before. And I went out there and the thing just hugged the ground and so much grip. And um, I beat Dave in the first race, didn't I? And uh, <laughs> he'd he come up to me. He'd, he'd gated about sixth or seventh. I'd all shot it. So I just charged as hard as I could. And with three laps to go, he'd just got to me. And I thought to myself, no, it's, 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 it's not going to get past me. So like, there was one, there was one straight... I remember him coming up and he went alongside me and we was going in this this left hand and I thought, no, no, he's not. And I just charged it and he backed off. I thought, 
well, that was all right. <laughs> I could do that again. <laughs> but he, he was he was fair and, you know, he could have really, like, nailed me anyway, really. But um, coming down, like, held it, held it, and, like, going down the last hill to the, to the last right-hander, there was a burn there, a lovely burn made. And I thought, he ain't passing me on the last corner. God, did I rail this last burn. When, when was that? Was that early, mid, or at the end of the season? That was, that was mid, mid to, yeah, about the fourth or fifth round, I think. But no, he just, I think he just won the World Championship. And he in that year, yeah. And um, yeah, and uh, I remember Alec, um, someone said, you know, is Alec coming down? They said, no, because Dave's going to win all three and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be boring. So Alec Rye didn't come down that day. No. And uh, yeah, and I won the first race, and that was it. Secured, it secured my deal for next year, the following year, actually. So, you know, good. Yeah, but that was that was. And Dave come up to me, <laughs> uh, and uh, he's he's. I said I actually said sorry to him. <laughs> <laughs> I said sorry, to him. <laughs> and he said no. He said you've done really. He said you deserve that. But wow, what a to be you know that 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 year was just yeah that was that was good that was good but yeah enjoyed that one. How many? I'm yeah. just trying to think how many riders have said sorry for beating somebody. You know, I've, I've always shook their hands. Well, it, whatever, it's just he, he was he was he was up there, wasn't he? He was on the pedestal and like I sort of frigged his year up a bit, really, on his British his his home year, but. Yeah. I mean, if, that, oh. if that meeting was in September and he'd gone clear all year, there's no way he was he, he wanted to be beaten. No, so no, I'm sure no. Got, I suspect yeah. the prize money was pretty good back then as well. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and he had been not been beaten the year before, so he'd nearly gone two years without being beaten. Yeah. So, did, so yeah. Did, how did you do in the other two races, then? Where did you finish overall in that? I was second or third in the second race, and about fourth or fifth in the last one. Okay, so you were top top three. You must have been. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Which you Did you that... practice? At, sorry, Dave. Don't I, carry on. I was going to say, Greg, did you practice your starts a hell of a lot? Because I don't. See, I've seen you. The way you go out of a gate is like you're gone. I, I don't. I don't know how. It's just. It's just. I think it's in you, isn't it? It's just you. You. You find a way that works for you. I. I I always start with two feet down. I never do this one foot down because I like to be completely balanced. And um, I just, I just sussed it. It just, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's about clutch control, I think. And um, the Kawasaki's that year that I beat Dave. I mean, the Kawasaki's used to pull third gear starts but before they had the power valve, you see. So that was really, that was really something. So be able to beat a factory Honda out the gate most times was, was good. But he was a little bit heavier. He was a little bit heavier than me to say, but but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was good. That was that was something I'd never forget. And you know, to for him to come to me and you know talk about it, and that was 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 good. It was it was good. Felt, when you were doing the the, the five hundred Grand Prix, uh, Greg, was there? Um, you know, did you chat to any of the other? Did you make friends with any of the other nationality riders? No, no, didn't really speak to no one. No, I, I was, I was, see, when I met Charlie, when I was 16, I was very, very shy. I, I lived on a farm and we didn't really go outside of that farm, you know. And um, I remember, you know, meeting Charlie and he took me out for a steak one night. And I said, what, what, what's a steak? I've never eaten a steak before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, different bit different than sausage egg and chips but <laughs> I, I, I can yeah, I can totally understand that but Charlie honestly he was he was I'll tell you what it was it was Charlie and it was Keith my older brother now Keith when I was 17 uh, he he found a trainer and he found uh, a guy uh, like a, a marathon runner it was local to us and we got involved both with both of those guys. And uh, I now realize, you know, from him doing that, how, how different it, you know, it took, took a little while, but how, what a difference it made to me to be fit and strong, you know, stronger, fitter. But you and, always uh, appeared to be very fit. 
but, not, but not fit enough. That was a problem. There was always the bracket, that top, top bracket that you were just a little bit away from. So, you know, I needed to be probably pushed that little bit harder, I think. But I don't know. I was always happy with my career. I was always happy with what I was doing because everything I got, I felt was a bonus always, you know. Every result was, you know, that just... Yeah, I I never believed I could do it until I've done it. So, which is not the way to be because you got to strive for the top, and I was never like that. I was just happy to ride bikes, and when the results come, I'd lost it blew my mind a little bit. But you know, especially with Dave, you know that like, how the hell did I do that? But there we go. It's just and, in the um, Just talking to your cousin Ken. Has, has Ken finally hung up his overcoat? Well, I think it was it was the last one of the Farley roads, the last one he done at Farley, one of your uh, meetings. He, he said that was enough. But honestly, that guy, he is a legend. Yeah. He's just a one-off. He's a one-off on a bike. He is a one-off when you go out with him. He, he's just he's just the funniest bloke. I remember him turning up at um, the Clash of the Titans, 2003, down in Dorset. And he turned up, he had a lamp, I think it was a green Land Rover with a with a trailer. With Still the, got it. <laughs> yeah, with the, with the shittest Husqvarna twin shock you had ever <laughs> seen in your life. It was hanging. You still but, got that um, as well. Yeah, but he absolutely he made everybody look stupid. He was yeah he, crazy. He, he, well, yeah, he lived up to his name. He was, <laughs> yeah. um, I, the thing I was, had the, it, I, sorry, I had exactly the same experience. The first time I met Kane was at. Uh, Farley Castle, Vets MXDN, and he literally pulls up, <laughs> gets his thing out. And I'm thinking, is that geezer going to ride this bike? And then I, then I see him going round like a rocket. And he's, I said, he said, when, I like, when was the last time you rode? He was like, oh, about five years ago or ten years a bike, ago. A bike always sounded like it was on its last, you know, last rev. It was going to the inch and inch of its life. But Christ, could that bloke ever ride a bike? Well, Ken. What I say about Ken, right? He, in all his years of racing, he never learned nothing. All he ever done was that. That's all he ever done. And he landed like that all the time off jumps, you know? But he was always like that. And he didn't care. And people used to say he used to go through them and all that, but he, he didn't know anything else. It wasn't, it's almost like it wasn't deliberate. It's, he's, he's just, there's it's something wrong in there with him. There's something wrong, you know? But he's the most tremendous fantastic guy to be around he's he's unique properly unique. Does, he, does he still have the horses because yeah he, yeah he yeah. Horse and carts, he? yeah yeah he's still got still got one horse i think right. uh, it, i haven't seen him for a long time because we can't get together but he's no. just he's just you know i speak i speak to him occasionally on the I'm, gonna I'm gonna bring some more comments up because alan oh. from graham alan from uh new zealand Watching from my hospital bed, just have my appendix out, makes a change from a knee operation. And you're all welcome. We're all welcome to go to oh, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good place out there. He's got a proper place. Yeah. Vets MXDN in New Zealand. Yeah, all time, yeah. Fantastic. Put me in. Um, I've got another one that someone's popped up. Um, there we go. Ask Greg about getting his 87 designation shirt donated back to him last week or so. Go get it. Go we'll get it. Or is that a secret? I'm just thinking, oh, no. It was like okay. a... Yeah. I've, um, I it popped up on a post last week. Uh, and Someone had been up into their loft and their dad had found my 87 designation shirt. And like my brother texts me straight away saying, you've seen this. And I've looked at it and I've got the message. And I said, God, I'd love to own that again. And he said, come and get it. No way. So, uh, so um, well, you gave uh, it away back at, at, at the race. Well, I, I never ended up with any of the Disnation shirts. So I don't know why, whether they went to the, the Ford and Ellis or, or what happened. I don't know, but I never ended up with them. But um, yeah, he, he, he come along. Uh, yeah, he said about it, and yeah, I went. I popped over the next day and and uh, got it. So uh, oh, okay. here we go. That's, that's nice when when the rider gets given stuff like that. Yeah, it's magic. 
Oh, awesome. Yeah, nice. And he yeah, had there, uh, I thought, I can't not give her anything. So he had a unicycle there that he was selling. So I said, I'll, I'll buy that off you. So that's my... <laughs> That's my thing I'm trying at the moment. So I've got I've got got it sus. So So is that gonna be you're gonna frame that, stick it on the wall? Yeah, definitely. Definitely gonna yeah. frame it and put it on the wall because that's I actually got in the last year I got my one of my team green eighty six shirts. So that's my two sort of main ones really. I've got a CCM shirt, so that's that's the three I remember, you know. So So do you still own a motocross bike, Greg? No, no. I've never I've never really owned too many to be honest with you um they've always been i've always had such good people around me that said ride this and ride this you know even in my later years it's always been you know ride this so it's yeah, yeah i've not owned too many i know what's going on she's six ten did am i right in saying that the very first sort of mr meeting did you rode a 610 husky yes i it uh, early i was on the yamaha and it was our it was my brother's yamaha and then um, I rode a 610 with for Mike Carter. That's it. What, what um, were they like? I mean, they looked a really, really big, big brawl <clears> for the ride. With, with, uh, at that particular time, like the Yamaha, you got out of the crate and it was cracking. The, the Husky, you had to really change it a lot. You know, a, really the suspension, the suspension was horrible and wallowy. Exactly. And yeah, and so it's, it's I, I didn't really set it up how I how it could be you know perry was the man really perry knew exactly over the yeah. years he had with his he could get a cracking bike but i couldn't i really didn't have the the time or the sort of know-how of what to do with it to get it as you wanted it so uh, so yeah that's what i've just been given oh nice okay yeah, look hey yeah. i haven't got a lot of things but that's the two things i've got when did when did you retire, Greg, from racing? Did you actually... St I know he's not retired. Two and a half years ago when I nearly no, died. <laughs> yeah, but no, but did you did you sort of, like, your younger career, were you, like you say, did you get to, say, 2000 and, and you didn't ride for a bit? And then did you sort of no. say, right, you just kept riding all the time? I, just had to, I had to keep riding. I had to keep riding. And there was always someone that wanted to give me a deal to go and ride wherever and do whatever. So... So you it literally was, never had a break, like a year no, break? No, no, I, I, I was always excited every winter. I was always in the gym and just saying, right, next year we're going to do this and do this. And it was, it was it, just the buzz never disappeared. It never disappeared. And it seems quite sad because I never put myself towards, uh, towards you know, a profession, you know, to, to earn proper money, you know. But, God, I've had an enjoyable life, you know. Exactly. It's, it's what what do you do? What do you do? So you know, the, in in two thousand and eight, when the is that the first time you've done the World Vets? God, was that two thousand and eight? Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that was what? it. See, what happened there um, is I was asked to test the CCM for trials and motocross. I think it was Pete Plummer that I was involved with then. And obviously I spoke with Austin and I said, Austin, bloody hell. I, the vets had just started up, I think, hadn't they? The, the vets. The, and uh, I said, God, I'd love to ride that in the vets. And um, Austin said, yeah, come on, let's do it then. He wasn't intended to do it, but we'd done it. And yeah, that's how it started. And God, what a cracking time again I had with CCM that year. CCM, wasn't it? Sorry? Was it the Yamaha engine CCM? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. But wow, I mean, again with Austin and Alan, all them years later, wow! I just it was just fantastic to go who, into the Grand Prix with a Grand Prix setup. Who were you riding against, Greg, in two thousand? Who was in the vets? Because was Thorpe Thorpe in it? Yeah, um, yeah they, there was some past um, Europeans, weren't there, doing it? Yeah, there was. Oh God, I did look at the results the other day. Um, there was yeah. um, the French Dunlop. Guy, um, I can't think. Oh, Kawasaki, I can't remember his name. Yeah, some, yeah. Other, but there, no, I'll tell you what there was there. There was the guy, um, the Belgian lad who comes to Farley. Um, oh, crikey, his name's just gone straight out of my head. But there was, there was, like, cause did you, you wrote it in the that year, didn't you? In the Vets? No. No, I didn't. Did you, um, you didn't year... go 
they won it there, didn't they? Who's that? What's that? They won it there in 2008. They had a vet, world vets round there. Was it definitely 2008 that I rode to CCM oh. then? I thought, I, thought that, um, I thought the last meeting at Namur was 2007, the actual last sort of race meeting there. Hmm. God blind me. If anyone, down. anybody wants to tell us, just watching live, and quickly Google it. <laughs> uh, I know yeah. that in when I rode the CCM, we went to Belle Puig, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, glad you reminded me. Otherwise, it, yeah, yeah, and you won. It, that's yeah, right. uh, and that's the first Grand Prix race that CCM have ever won, and. Um, it was funny because it was obviously a wet weekend. It had been raining when we got there on on, on Saturday, and um, it was just raining. So it was, it was mad, mad wet. Anyway, um, I went off the line and um, hanging in there, and I lost my brake after about ten minutes. I lost my rear brake, and then people were dropping, dropping away, and what have you. And I kept going and kept going, and uh, I just my braking was like just whacking it down through the gearbox to for the corners and uh, i went over the line thinking i'd finish third or fourth or whatever and when i would rode up they told me i'd won the race yeah. i didn't even know i had no idea when they waved the checkered flag that i'd won so the race muddy. it was so I, muddy it was unbelievable wet but yeah that was like god why that was that was something i presume that's the belgium guy delaney hansen's yeah, just right. hi delaney Peter. Peter Ivan, that's who was Ivan. in with us that year, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I thought Delaney might know that. All right, Moose. But that, that World Vets, that's it, Jan Blanquart, that's the name I'm thinking of. That World Vets, was that, that, I'm sure I'm sure that was like a three-round series that year. That was, it, it was, um, yeah, it was, yeah, he started off in Belgium, uh, started off in Spain. I thought there was, it was definitely one at Namura because Thorpey won it. Maybe you were injured or something. Otherwise, you would have been there. Well, remember, remember um, Mallory. What happened at Mallory? Eh, it was uh, a bit of a disaster there in the first race uh, or the second race because I went over the I went over the big jump at the top and uh, the rear tire popped off the rim. Oh God, and that pitched. was a big jump, wasn't it? That was massive. Yeah. We we've that, got another that. one of your uh, your old sparring partners watching, Greg. Sorry to interrupt. Um, Mark Banks has put 07 um, the last time there was a yeah, race at um, the Mer. It was with, um, Elliot then with the Swift Suzuki team. They were doing the GP, so he would have been at all of them. You'd have, had, you'd have had some good tussles with Mark back in the day, I presume. Well, there is one, and Mark, I remember this one, uh, again, Farley Castle, and it was the Maybug. And uh, Mark had broke down in the first race on his KTM. And in the second race, um, it was me who went out in front. We must have passed each other five or six times. What a cracking race. What was that he, he went off and won it in the end. Right, 90, was it? Or 90, 90? 92. I think I was 92. Okay. But wow, what a, what, a, what a good race. I mean, we passed each other so many times. And um, it was just someone like him that's so aggressive. And I was there with him, working it the same, and we the different lines we found, and it was yeah, just a cracking, cracking race. Yeah. Was that a standalone? I must have been there watching, but I don't remember what was it. Was that Maybug? Maybug is what it was called. Yeah, Maybug meeting. Sorry. Just a one-off meeting. Yeah. 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 Just a one-off meeting, but uh, I think there's there is video coverage of it, and I've watched that race. Why well, I remember it so well is I watched it the other day with me and Mark. Someone posted it up, and uh, yeah, it was just just really really good, really good race. He was a hard man. You rode Harley back in the you know back in the eighties, so you would know the difference between the Harley now that you used the for some reason, Dave, you're breaking up. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I probably haven't paid my bill. And that's it. You're clear <laughs> again now. You're clear now. Yeah, it's come. Say that again, Dave. 
at ten p in the slot. That's per, there must be a loose connection somewhere. When you move that lead, it came clear. How's that? That's better. Yeah, that's it. You got it. Yeah, I think Greg, you would know the differences between you rode Farley in the eighties, the you know the full on Grand Prix track, and the one we use now is a, it's a fair bit. The one we use now is a fair bit shorter and a different yeah. different layer in the main field. Yeah, it um, did it go up a little further when it goes it up the top. The it went into it another field. Yeah, and you, you turn around and drop back into That's the it. field. When, yeah, that when you come into Farley now up the top through that gravel field, where, you, where you're at, um, where the sign up is up right at the top, that gravel road there, you actually went up and across that, and in that camping field, and then dropped back down. There was a drop of about ten foot from That's one it. field into the other. That's Which where Dave Watts, Dave Watson broke his leg there. Do you know that? I think you're right. Yeah, he missed a yeah. gear, didn't he? On the That's, bike it. That's right. Missed a gear. 86. Yeah. That's it. it was 86 yeah. 87 on that KTM 350. Mm. That's right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I remember that. It's like all these things, everything overgrows, doesn't it? You know, things grow. It's like it's like 40 years ago. You know, nineteen eight. Well, forty one years ago, nineteen eighty or the eighties. No, it's not. Like, it's not. What are no. you talking about? <laughs> but it's like this, the, ten years ago. It's like the steps. The, you watch the old videos. The steps up were like worn away, worn away to compared to what they used to be. Like the steps down the same. But it's always going to happen, isn't it? When you ride mm. tracks, they get yeah, but the steps are still as high as they ever were. They have, they've not got any lower. Oh no. no, they're still steep, but they're not so they're not so wavy as they used no, to be. No, but it's still for anybody that can can clear them. Fair play to them because I've that's something I've never been able to do. Never. It still it's hurts still... when you crash going down that hill at the bottom. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> oh god! Sorry. Oh dear. Well, God, look at that. Two hours. Where did that go? And we still haven't talked about like the beach race yet. Oh, don't, don't. The beach race. First time I've done the beach race on one of Kurt Nichols' bikes from that year. And Are last we talking about that. Western? Western? Yeah, Western beach race. And, uh, you know, I had Kurt's bike, and that lasted an hour till it ran out of spark. So I pushed that back. Uh, I was lying inside a top 10. And then the second year I used one of my bikes, well, one of my team green bikes, it had a bit of use, so that got up the end of the start straight and seized, and I pushed that back, and I said, that's it, I'm not doing Western ever again. <laughs> and that was it. Never done it since. No. 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 When, when you look back at the old Western, it was absolute. The, the start looked absolutely mental. I, I saw a video, right? I, I, I captured it, and there's a digger in the middle of yeah, the start I've straight seen, seen that. with a guy holding a, holding flare. a flare. Yeah. With the Do you think they did going... a risk assessment for that? <laughs> Just like... <laughs> Just like like wondering... we can this week. Oh, oh, I don't know whether you were riding at it that year, Greg, or if you can remember it, but I just saw a video. Yeah, I, I, I do, actually. It. it was all so different them days, wasn't it? Hey? Oh, oh, we yeah. didn't give a rap. How anybody didn't get killed is a miracle, to be honest. I know, I know. I know. Yeah. It's, you know it's not an easy not an easy race to, what to was win. You? What was your experience like in Glen Helen, Greg, when you went over for the World Vets? Was that a great experience? Uh, my thoughts, like of Glen Helen, is one of the best tracks I've ever ridden. I think it's, I think it's an amazing circuit, and um, I, I met Kurt out there obviously because he's 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 full time out there, and um, I had a, that was two thousand and nine. Um, I was going through a bit of a rough time at the time, so I said I'm, I'm going to go out there and have a, have a do the the world and uh, i had a third in the first one just behind kurt and a, i crashed in the second one and broke my clutch lever so i had a tenth in the second one and that i was quite pleased with that but um fantastic uh, america is just just a dream isn't it the way they run it out there the way it's organized the weather they have i mean that glenn helen glenn they helen, don't realize how lucky they are they oh god almighty it's just it's mud across heaven out there proper yeah, mud across heaven we, we were born in the wrong place yeah i know i know but you know it's it's the europeans are just getting it together now i think so you know, we got we got some talent over here who were the guys so who were the other guys that you raced with at glenn helen that year 
the one who won the first race was an enduro rider, so someone young, surname Young, I think it was. Okay. But he was on a 450 Suzuki. Uh, Kurt was second, and um, I remember Kurt coming to me, talking to me. He said, uh, "Greg, uh, how, how much riding do you do these days?" And you know, like, over in England, I said, "Yeah, I, I ride a fair bit. I ride a fair bit." So he's sussing out of what I'm going to be like on the day, you know. But I just before I crashed in the second race, I was I was doing him. I was I was in front of him, so. Uh, or second, was, that, I think. was that the year that um, uh, Daryl, yeah, Daryl King and uh, Dubak had a real ding dong? Was that, <coughs> that maybe, no. uh, maybe that was another race over, over there. No, he, no, I don't know if Dubak was in it. He might have been. He must have been. There, he he yeah. must have been, yeah, because he's always in it, isn't he? Lives there. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> but, um, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, for any motocross yeah. guy, it's a great experience to go there. In fact, beginning of last year, so a year ago, we went out and done 10 days with Kurt, a uh, group of us. And, uh, yeah, Kurt was very good, really, really good. So, you know, bike hire and what have you, and went around and done the tracks, including Glen Helen. So I didn't ride myself, but I was out there with a, you know, the brother and... Um, of course you of course you didn't ride <laughs> no i didn't ride no <laughs> it was funny actually how far is <laughs> your wife away from you jackie <laughs> big stick <laughs> i did say to kurt i did say to him kurt every time i ask you to ride if i can ride just tell me to fuck off and he'd done that every day i asked him if i can have a ride he told me that he said yeah <laughs> honestly jack so he did he told yeah i didn't i didn't do a lap I did actually. It was hard. <laughs> I've got a good question. I don't. I'm not sure when the date of this is, but it's quite a good question. All, all, all the motocross people watching, um, we'll have to find out when it is. But I'm sure everybody will want to go to it. Um, I, think Goss a, is... I think there's a couple of them in there. There's the the Devon are doing one, and um, the Somerset Club are doing one. Yeah. Uh, Brian Goss was laid to rest on Friday, so um, you know, thoughts go out to his family and everything. Great rider, so um, yeah, I'm sure all the motocross fraternity will be there when we, whatever one it is, and the dates. So if somebody wants to send it to me on Facebook or whatever, we can pop it up. Cheers, Colin Burnett. Right, so I think we're done. Another marathon one. A marathon, oh, yeah. two hours. Two wow. hours, there you yeah. go, look. But we've had like over, we've got 120 people watching all the time. So Brilliant. that just shows you how popular you are. Thank you very Greg. much. Um, no, normally, by, normally, with numbers, normally um, by tomorrow, it would have had, like it's gone around the world, and it had probably be up to like 10,000 people that have looked at it. I'd just Brilliant. like to thank you for coming on, Greg, and sharing your 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 uh, life with us. Um, especially, obviously, like what you told us about your dad and your family. It must have been like hard to. It's always going to be hard to say it online, and so thank you for mm. sharing that with us and and all your stories. And it's been mm. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and it's been brilliant. And I'm yeah, thanks, glad Greg. glad to have met you like later on. Like, Although I'd met you a few times, but I was a little kid and then met you at Farley Castle and had the honour to perform at your wedding. So, right. Yeah, you did. That. And what a cracking job you've done as well. And <laughs> I've never no, heard that. I, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Dave. Yeah, I never, you didn't tell me that. I yeah, just he I'd... performed at our, our wedding. Yeah, he did. So, oh, yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. It but... was it was. I've got to say, it was the best wedding I have ever been to because the, it, we went on the Friday night. So the Friday night was just like literally a load of motocross riders talking how fast we were, or you know <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. And then the wedding on the Saturday. And it's a beautiful place. Yeah. It's got a lovely wife, Jackie. She's lovely. Um, they've got a lovely daughter as well now. Yeah. So um, yeah. she's keeping you busy, I presume. She's. 
very very energetic i tell you she is just just absolutely full on full on brilliant absolutely brilliant keeps me alive she does definitely so uh, but well, look, listen, uh, i just thank you all for, uh, thank you for inviting me on and, and and for me personally to to be asked to do this and um you know it, it it's, it's just bring back lots of memories and it makes me feel like somebody again tonight if you know what i mean so it's just uh, I, I, I really appreciate it i really appreciate it and, and anyone that's watching tonight and has carried on watching thank you very much and uh yeah well i'm gonna give you a round of applause greg and i'm sure everyone at home is fingers fingers crossed for september yeah, yeah. fingers crossed definitely love it yeah All right, mate. thank you thanks greg cheers thank cheers you. dave thank cheers, you very greg. much all the best cheers Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, really enjoyed that. Greg's a top guy. Um, I think we'll finish on how we, how we start the show because that's a good way to finish. Thanks for watching. Um, keep your eyes out on Vets MXDN Facebook page um, for other interviews. Hope you tried to get all the... Uh, Comments up. is different so uh, we'll see how the third one goes hopefully, hopefully we can get out in front again and uh, try it again yes it can't go wrong three times running surely it has done before <laughs> <laughs> but in leg three greg was again out in front and about to lap a back marker Brackley. there is the race leader still greg hansen a little bit disappointed i would suspect with having the first he's two. established such a commanding lead in this one to my mind it's unlikely that Prattley can reel that in. However, Prattley first of all has to demolish Matt Bates and we're looking at them now. And Bates has waved him through. Matt Bates and a bit of politics there and that defeats me for a moment. I can't think for a moment why Matthew Bates would have waved Craig Prattley through. They were old schoolboy adversaries for many, many years. But of all three Ken Hall legs. Hansen has got the entire length of the start finish straight, as you can see. Still in fourth place, number 37, Marshall. Well, a nice warm feeling for Greg Hansen. I think he feels that this one is really his now. Look at the lead he has, and he'll be looking... Down that far start straight into that sweeping right-hander that has a little bit of a away camber, does catch a few riders out. But number five it is, then goes to the front, Greg Hansen. Here they go, but it is Hansen. Greg Hansen also riding 500 Grand Prix, but coming back to the British Championship for the 125s. Back underway as Hansen at the front leads under no challenge whatsoever. Second a lot for his determination after taking that exit off the track with Steele into the ropes. But the leader coming through, Hansen from Barford. These two really are not easy when you're that far back. Hansen on the Hansen Honda. Riders, the chequered flag comes up and goes out. Celebratory wheelie from Greg Hansen. Oh, Hansen here they go. Look at the difference. Hansen flies. Oh, tremendous stuff from the Hurricane Hansen and Dave Thorpe that came out over that jump. Now they're into the bomb hole. Thorpe gets hooked up there on that jump. Top through. Hansen got him. Hansen will outside it as they go into the left hander. Hansen goes for the inside line. Thorpe's going to miss that score belt. Hansen again. He's there, Rod! He's on it! And then they disappear into the tree!